Hi True Crime fans, we are still in week 23 and we are to our third case. Um, these are a couple of cases I've um, put all together to catch up. Um, they all involve shooting. No, I don't have a shot here with me. I usually pair shootings with a shot of whiskey because it seems tough. Um, but we do have our Smirnoff Ice cooler because the air is still not fixed and uh, I need to be a little bit cooler. Alright, case one. Um, so, I'm not sure what makes something a mass shooting versus just a weird shooting. There was this family camping in Iowa. Uh, they were at, and I am not going to say the name correctly, uh, the Mac Mac. Quasita, Maquasita, uh, Cave State Park Campground. It's about 180 miles um, east of Des Moines, Iowa. And everybody, you know, like a campground, a state campground, families, right? So the Schmidt family is there. And there's Tyler Schmidt and Sarah Schmidt, a mom and dad, both 42. Um, Lulu, or Lula, um, Lula is six, was six, and um, Arlo, nine. So, at about right before 6.30 in the morning on, this was just recently, it was Friday morning, their shots ring out. First there's a scream, and then there's shots. I'm assuming the scream might have been from the mother seeing somebody enter the tent, what we know is that both parents were unalived and Lula was unalived. Arlo escaped somehow and is fine as and is with family. So um, some bystander actually reported seeing him. He's got very distinctive, beautiful, curly strawberry hair. And they saw him in these cute pajamas standing with the officers. And he had like one blue tennis shoe on. Um, the camp... Immediately people were calling the police. The police come. The camp is evacuated and then searched. And they find in a wooded area one person who was, you know, when you go to a state camping ground, I don't know if you're aware, but you, you have to sign in to get your spot. Um, remember the DeSoto camp things with the laundries? How we knew that they had been there even though they didn't tell anybody because there had been um, a record of them reserving the spot. So when you camp at a state ground, you usually reserve a spot. So they evacuated the area and then they looked for missing people. And they found that there was a missing person, a 23-year-old from Nebraska by the name of Anthony Sherwin. Anthony's picture, he's got those those eyes. We might call them crazy eyes. Those like where you can see the whole eye and the white around it, which has been indicative of um, some not great mental health. Um, yeah, what's with 23 year olds? I mean, we had the 4th of July shooter, um, also with kind of crazy eyes, right? Uh, we've got a lot of 18, 17 to 23 year old men who seem to be losing their shit with weapons. I don't know, but it, it's like a, um, it's like an epidemic. It's, it's strange. Um, yeah, and they don't think he knew the family. And had, and, and there's no known interaction like so how did he target them he was found to be missing from the evacuation then when they went looking they found him in the wooded area and he had unalived himself um which i always find unfortunate because i think it's important to analyze why this happens what trigger how were they radicalized why was this a thing are they ill what were the signs we want to analyze it. Why? So that we can prevent this or we can at least notice when there's symptoms around us and stop it. Um, so the uh, it, um, Arlo has family and he was not hurt. So that is good. Um, it's just really weird. Okay. 
So, another weird shooting incident. Now, this is not a mass shooting because there was no one shot. It's weird. At the same field, I believe, that um, President Kennedy flew into when he was assassinated in Dallas, the Love Airport um, in Dallas, a woman was reported to go in. Now, this is Dallas, Texas. Uh, apparently, in Texas, I think right now in Ohio, and I don't think in Michigan, but you don't have to have, like, you can have a carrying conceal. Now, I don't think in the Midwest here you can have it in the airport. Um, but in Texas, hey, come as you are. So, I guess there's no, like, um, magtometers, mags. If you've been listening to the January 6th testimony, you might know what mags are. I didn't know that acronym before, but um, a magtometer, which is, a, you know, the um, metal detectors you walk through. Um, no, there's, so you're allowed to have guns. And I, I don't understand that at all, because don't airplanes have rules? I, it just, all of that seems weird. Like, I don't want to fly with anybody who's allowed to just carry and conceal. But anyway, um, she went into the bathroom. Uh, she changed her clothes, which is, I don't understand this aspect of it, and then walked out of the bathroom and shot the ceiling until a cop shot her. Now, in the leg, which I appreciate, because let's find out what in the hell was going on. It appears as if, because she didn't shoot people, she shot at the ceiling. Was she making a political statement about anybody can get a gun in here and this is wrong? I mean, I don't know. It's sexist. Good luck, honey. I don't think you're changing. The, like, they don't they don't care. That is not something that's changed. I mean, I think the people of Texas care about their safety and want more um, reasonable, like, laws about who should be, you know, carrying around deadly weapons. But it, it is it is a cultural thing. So anyways, um, we'll find out more about that. That happened this weekend. Um, another shooting-related incident, and uh, this is case 3C, um, is the Parkland shooter, Nicholas Cruz. So he admitted, I mean, to uh, the acts at Parkland, at the uh, Marjorie Douglas Stone High School. He, I mean, he was on film. Uh, this is the penalty phase, life or the death penalty. And it has been um, really heart-wrenching for everybody involved. Personally, I mean, it's easy to say you don't believe in the death penalty when it isn't your um, relative involved. Excuse me. I mean, I, I don't know. It just seems illogical and um, antithetical to your moral, like if you're against killing, that the, that the answer is killing. Um, I know it costs money to keep people in prison. I mean, personally, I think that we could do with a little less frills and everybody should be kept separate and not allowed out except to, yeah, you know I mean, I think it should be a lot tougher and everybody says, well, that's inhumane treatment. Well, death seems more inhumane. So, I mean, I come down on a weird side of what prisons should look like. Um, but regardless, I think when he did this, I don't know if he was 18 yet. I, again, we have young men losing their minds, doing horrific acts, and I, I just wonder, guns cost a lot of money. Who is giving these children enough cash to buy this is one thing. I don't, there's, like, it's very weird. Okay, um, the Uvalde report came out a little bit about what uh, we've seen more um, analysis as to the police response or shall I say non-response and I think there's more to come out about this it's odd you had a whole police department um, they practice for this stuff the kids practice for this stuff they knew what they had to do. There was procedure, and none of them fouled it. And there was a, a you know a police chief directing them not to do anything in way that's against all the policy. It's very odd. 
especially for Texas. I mean, yeah, the border police came in and took care of business, but, you know, that could have been done an hour before. What happened? There is something very wrong. And how did that kid who was living on his grandparents' couch, he'd been thrown out of his house by his mom, how did he get the money? Again, how did he obtain those weapons? He had been working part-time at Wendy's. That, is that enough to save up for two, like, automatic weapons? These are thousands of dollars. I mean, I have an okay lifestyle, and I can't just buy anything for hundred. Like, I, I cannot spend over a hundred dollars without, you know, checking with savings. That's just not prudent. But certainly, just spending thousands of dollars here and there. Where did he get the money? His grandfather said he was a felon, so he couldn't have guns in the house, and he wouldn't have allowed him. So wait, how, what? Something is wrong with this picture. I don't know what yet, but um, the report, the analysis of what happened, obviously. Um, so far, the one police chief guy, the school police chief, I believe, who had been elected to city council, is now off city council. Um, I believe other people are being looked at for being fired. Oh, I am assuming we'll hear more about that. I don't know. Um, there seems to be a lot of triggering, and I hate to use the word triggering when talking about shooting, but I mean, it seems like it's somehow there's been some radicalization of members of our society, and it would be interesting to find out why and how so that we could stop this. Um, again, that shooter is no longer with us, so we won't be able to find out from him. So maybe the 4th of July, um, Robert Cremillo III, you know, might be able to help us out. Um, and the Buffalo shooter. Um, and I'm not, I didn't even write down his name, and I don't really care to say his name. Ha! Huh, what do you think about that? Now, we know how he got the guns, because his family was rich, and I believe they just, you know, gave him money to buy him. Um, yeah, that a excuse me. Jackal. Um, sorry. I mean, he's 18 and he seems to, he seems to, you know, have a white supremacist uh, ideology. And we can only imagine how, you know, he grew up during a certain political um, milieu that would have encouraged that. And online, unfortunately. So, it, and it does seem race, uh, bias, hatred. A hate crime related. I think he said as much. Hey, don't worry though. He's not guilty. Again, th him saying he's not guilty is like finding that lady in the um, passenger seat of her car when she's hasn't been seen for two weeks and just her car suddenly shows up and it, they say it isn't suspect. Okay, both of it's bullshit. All right, sorry about that. It's YouTube. I believe I'm allowed to speak colorfully. It's still hot in here, but now I'm getting worked up. So, um, yeah, that's what we have about those cases for this week. Too many shooting related cases, right? And some are very odd. If you have a 17 to uh, 23 year old kid, um, don't, 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 don't just let them have automatic weapons please please for the rest of us i'm just saying or what like i don't know shouldn't they be like doing dishes and helping out at home i don't know are they even at home maybe that's the problem i don't know our, our society is untethered from each other and we're having problems people i don't know what the answer is so we'll probably have more stories that fit into that category unfortunately all right